to Bishop Slater, First Lady Slater, and their Elsie, to, to all my brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. I'm reading Psalms 100. Shout triumphantly to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Acknowledge that the Lord is good God. He made us and we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his course with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name for the Lord is good and his love is eternal. His faithfulness endures all up through all generations. I read for you Psalms 100. May the Lord have a better blessing. May the Lord add a blessing to the reason hears of his most holy word. You may be seated. Lord, we love Jesus because Jesus is special. Jesus is real. Jesus is real. And Jesus loves you because you are special. Please love Jesus. And they mean he love you. Amen. Father God, it's once again that we come to you and bow knees, Father God, and say thank you, Lord. Thank you for allowing us to see another day, Father God, that wasn't promised to us, Father God. But, but Father God, we know it through your grace and your mercy, Father God, that we're here today, Father God. Now, Father God, we'd ask that you step, stop by today, Father God, and touch us today, Father God. Father God, ask blessing for the shepherd of this house, this family, Father God, new millennium family, Father God. Father God, we ask a blessing on those who are sick and shed in, Father God, and those who are in bereavement, Father God. Oh, Father God, you know our prayers before we even ask, Father God. And Father God, we know that you have all power in your hand, Father God, because you reign from on high, Father God. And we know that there's no hiding place down here, Father God. Now, Father God, we ask a blessing for the, on the preachers, teachers, and missionaries everywhere just out preaching your undying word. These another blessed ass son, Jesus' name. Amen.
start saving. Well, so he came and yeah. changed your life. Isn't that enough to stand yeah. up and give God praise yeah. on today? On today, this day that he has made. Good morning. Welcome to praise and worship. You're yeah. invited to serve and praise and worship a true and living God. Amen. 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 While you yet have time. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Yes. Truly, he is worthy. You are so blessed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
situations that he needs to turn around and just lay it in the midnight hour. That's when you sleep. Or should be sleeping, because he never sleeps nor slumps. So turn it over to him and let him turn those situations around. Amen.
Hallelujah. How many know the Lord is so good? Yes. If you know the Lord is so good, just stand on your feet and give him a praise offering. Lift your hands up to heaven and say, Lord, you're just so good to me. When I think about what you've done for me, how you brought me out, how you kept me covered, how you protected me. Somebody just give the Lord a praise offering and say, Lord, you're just so good. Oh, when I think about, <laughs> look back over my life and I start thinking about some things. Can't help but to say, thank you, Lord. 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 Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It didn't have to be me that you woke up this morning. <laughs> but thank you, Lord. It didn't have to be me that you kept out of the hospital today. <laughs> but thank you, Lord. It didn't have to be me that was able to take one more breath this very moment. But thank you, Lord. The Lord is good, so good. The Lord is good, so good. The Lord is good, so good. Praise his name, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord this morning, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul rejoices. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Truly, God is worthy to be praised, isn't he? If you would just do yourself a favor, just high five three people next to you and say, God is just so good. So good, so good, so good, so good. God is so good this morning. Oh, he's worthy. He's worthy. Now look at one of them three people and say, God is good because I see him being good all over you. Say, so you're looking wonderful this morning. You're looking blessed this morning. God is so good. You're just looking like he's just walking with you and, and he's talking with you and, and he's keeping you. Say, somebody say, God is so good. <laughs> Even in the midnight hour, he watches over me. Oh my God, my God. How many ready to go higher? Higher, higher. Oh my Jesus. We're going to today, our youth are in charge, and Mrs. Alexis Reed Brown is going to be doing our responsive reading. If you have yet to rest upon your feet, I ask you to please stand. Amen. Amen. If you want to know about New Millennium Bible Fellowship Praise Center, it's our mission and vision statement, and which is our responsive reading. Amen. 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 Bless the Lord. Giving all praises to God and the Bishop Slater, Sister Slater, and all my brothers and sisters in Christ. To be obedient to the word of God by discipleship, 2 Timothy 2 and 15, congre congregation. And a sharing the joy of Jesus Christ and our witnessing to the laws of backsliders. Matthew 28, 19 through 10. Promoted a spiritually physical worship service flowing with truth, praise, Psalms 150, congregation, giving cheerfully and regularly to the cause of Christ while developing our stewardship. Malachi 310, Luke 638. Imprinting community based outreach program, meeting its spiritually, physically, financially needs. Matthew 5 13 through 16, congregation. Therefore, living holy and loving unconditionally. Our brothers and sisters in Christ, Romans 12, 1, John 13, 34, and 35. The vision statement for NMBF Praise Center is helping the hopeless, providing healing, peace, and true praise. You matter, Christian Praise Center. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Giving all praises to God under Bishop Slayer and First Lady, and to you, all my brothers and sisters of Christ. 
Can all the first time guests please stand in the presence of the Lord? Amen. Tell us your name and who invited you. Welcome card and please please accept a welcome card and turn it in during offering. The nursery is not open can, and can all the youth choir, please go to the choir stand. Amen. New Millennium, please stand. Those who are seated are our guests. Please greet them with a holy hug and kiss and youth choir to the choir stand.
morning, church. Good morning. Give my prayers to God, honest to the bishop and first lady, to my brothers and sisters in Christ. These are announcements for October 11, 2015. AO and AOP 2, unrestricted praises 1 to 2, rehearsal on Monday, October 12th from 7 to 8.30. J. Lee Math Choir rehearsal Tuesday, October 13th um, at 7.30. Praise team directed musician rehearsal at 6.30. Minister Alice Gutton. Praise service every Sunday, 8 p.m. sharp. Please see Sister Karen Willis for more details. New partners orientation every third Sunday, 9 p.m. sharp. Please see Deacon Cole for more details. Next orientation is Sunday, October 18, 2015. Amen. NMBFPC is scheduled for October and upcoming events. All NMBFPCs requested to attend. Today, Today. Um, ministry pictures. Please be prepared to stay and follow directions um, from MQ. Amen. All fundraising funds are due today for both Tupperware and popcorn sales decommitted. Fine Arts Semi Annual Meeting, Tuesday, October 13th at 7. All of Fine Arts is requested to attend. Minister Alice Gutty. NMBFPC 14th Annual Church Anniversary. <laughs> Sunday, October 18th at 4 p.m. All partners are asked to support with their love offering of $75 per person. Layaway is available. If you start today, you will pay $37.50 per week. Amen. Deacon as mentor. Amen. Grow Fest in 2015, Saturday, October 24th, from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Yeah, your address is in the bulletin. <laughs> Anointed or K one and two will be ministering. All partners are asked to support. Amen. In NMBF PC outing, 84th Church Anniversary Goodwill Baptist Church, Sunday, October 25th at 3:30. The address will be in your bulletin. Mr. Slater will be the main speaker, and Fine Arts will be ministering. NMBF PC outreach, Heavenly Fall Fest. Saturday, October 31st, from 5 to 7 p.m. Each partner is asked to support with two bags of candy. Servants are needed to serve our community, Sister Valerie Huey. Bless God for the supporters and tithes for this ministry for the first Sunday in October. Amen. Amen. Y'all give him a hand. He was nervous about that. Amen. Amen. Uh, we do have one additional announcement. We are actually going to open up the nursery for our babies who are three and under. So um, when you get ready for prayer, if you want to bring those babies back, we'll take them um, when we get ready for all to call. Amen. 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 Any emphasis? He's coming. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Good morning. It's offer time. Praise the Lord. You're now in hands of our ushers. Say loud. You're now in hands of our ushers.
thank you for this offering on today, Father God. Father God, ask a blessing of those who gave, Father God, and those who had a desire to give but had it not. These are another blessing that sound in Jesus' name. Amen.
y'all know God is good? How many of y'all know God is good? What a blessing it is to be here. I, everybody who came in today came in on their own two feet. Everybody who came in, y'all came in with smiles. I mean, even if we went through something, you pushed through to get here, which means you came for something. You had a purpose. We're going to come to the altar at this time. We're going to come. We're going to bring our burdens to the altar. We're going to leave them there. So please come at this time. Come with your family. Come with your kids. You stand right next to them. Hold them. I know we got some kids in the choir stand, so we'll just reach up to them. But come with your families. Because we know a family that prays together does what? Stays together. Amen. Amen. We want to thank you for waking us up this morning because this day wasn't promised. And we want to thank you for letting us make it here safely because somebody didn't make it to their destination, Lord. And we want to just have you to keep watching over us as we travel and go to school and work. And we want you to just keep blessing us and protecting us, Lord, and just let us leave here better than we came. And just let us get a good word this morning. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Lord, thank you for this day that was not promised to us. Thank you for letting us get here safely. We just thank you for putting shoes on our feet and clothes on our backs. We pray that you would just keep guiding and protecting us. We just thank you for letting us see another day. We pray that you would just forgive us for all our sins that we have committed knowingly and unknowingly. We just thank you for just sending your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins. Because we know he didn't have to. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Oh, and thank you for letting everybody get here safely to get your word, for to get our blessing in the future, and for all the blessings we got throughout this week and before and after. Thank you for all the sick people, hoping they get up and wake up from the comas and get their body parts back. And that, bi and that bishop g gives a, give a good word this morning. And please not pray, amen. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Please help the rest of this day to go well. Help the pr pleasant grove area to become a more pleasant place. Help the presidential offices to make the right decisions for our country, help the people in the hospitals and the people in the shelters and the people out on the streets and help more people to hear your word and get and get saved. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, right now, Lord, we just come to you as always. We just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be here. Thank you for allowing us to make it safely, Lord. Lord, we pray a special prayer for all the families who stand here right now, Lord. We pray a special prayer for all these children, all these youth, Lord. They could be doing so many other things. So many of them were out last night at homecoming, Lord, but they are here today to praise and worship you, Lord, and we just thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for all the parents that had, Lord, just knew to bring them here, to knew to have them in the house of the Lord, and we just ask a special blessing blessing on their lives right now, Lord. Lord, right now someone is coming and they are heavy burdened with issues in their family, their jobs, or whatever it may be, Lord. And we just pray right now that as they walk back to their seat, that they leave it here, Lord, knowing that only you can fix it, knowing that only you can make the change in that man, Lord. You can make that change in that woman, Lord. You can make that change in that child. It is nothing that anyone else can do, Lord. Lord, so right now we just give you all the praise and all the glory. We thank you in advance for what you're going to do, Lord. We pray that if we've done anything that was not pleasing unto you, Lord, even the things that we bring upon ourselves, Lord, because a lot of our issues we bring upon ourselves, Lord. So even right now, we ask for forgiveness, Lord. We say we're sorry. I say it for everyone in here. We're sorry, Lord. Help us to do better. Help us to be better. Help us to be better examples, Lord. Lord, we just thank you in advance for what you're going to do in our lives, in our children's lives, Lord. And we say we are sorry. Help us to grow, Lord. Lord, as we grow closer to you, we'll go closer to those around us, Lord. We know that they will see the God in us 
us. Let us be good examples of what you have called us to be, Lord. Let us do what you would want you want us to do, Lord. Let us just be a light. Lord, as we go to work tomorrow or as we go to work this week, Lord, something just about us is different. They can't figure out what it is. It's just something that's different. People try to come to us with mess and they just, I can't even talk to you about it because it's just something different about you. Exactly, Lord. Let that light just shine in them, Lord. We give you all the praise and all the glory. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I worship, I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you, just want to tell you, Lord, Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. Mm. I worship and adore you. I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you, just want to tell you, Lord, Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Say it like you really mean it. I worship. I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you, just want to tell you, Lord, you know, I love you. Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship. I worship. Hallelujah. I just want to tell you, Lord. Lord, I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord. Lord, I love you, Lord. Lord, I love you. I love you, Jesus. I worship, Mike. I worship and adore you, Lord. Lord, I love you. I love you more. I love you more. I love you more. Just set the atmosphere right now. Just whatever ground hasn't been broken up, whatever fellow ground is still a little rocky and hard, just set the atmosphere and say, Lord, I want to receive your word. I, I need a healing. I want to receive your word. I need an understanding. Lord, I'm ready to receive your word because I want to be made better than I was when I first came in here, Lord. I love you more, Lord. I love you more. I love you more than my mother. I love you more than my father. I love you more than my husband. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you. I love, I love you, Jesus. I worship. I worship. And I adore you. I just want to tell you, Lord, that I love you. Father God, as we have the man of God, the man that you have appointed here, Father God, the angel of this house, the under shepherd, Father God, as he come forth and bring your word, Father God, we pray that you continue to anoint him from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. Father God, whatever it is, whatever other things there might be, remove it from his mind that he may, his mind may be stayed on you. And through his lips of clay, Father God, he may proclaim your holy word. And we, your sheep, Father God, will be fed. Fed so that we should, we too shall be who you would have us to desire for us to be. But then we also may be able to share it with a dying world. 
I love you, Lord, more than anything, more than my aches and pains, more than my confusion, more than other folks, more than my job, more than my children. I love you, Lord, because you are worthy to be praised. You are so holy, and because you love me so much that you gave your only begotten son, Father God, I love you. Thank you. Continue to consecrate him as he deliver your word. We thank you, Father, for giving us this moment. For you are worthy, worthy. In Jesus' most holy name. Jesus' most holy name. Now the angel of this house, the under shepherd that the Lord himself has placed here, we bless God for our very own Bishop J. Lee Slater. Amen. Come on, let's put our hands together and bless the Lord in this place. Amen. Isn't he worthy? Isn't God worthy? Just go on and salute your neighbor and say, neighbor, God is worthy of all the praise. He's worthy of everything that you can probably give to him. And I've come to realize that wouldn't be enough. Amen. Just go on and worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Amen. Do you believe he's worthy of it? Hallelujah, somebody. I, I, I see there are some praises in the house, amen. There's some worshipers in the house. Worship God in the beauty of his holiness, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God, I tell you. Amen, amen, amen. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, his name is worthy. His name is worthy. Amen. Bless God. Bless God. And giving all obedience to God, the exaltation of Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit who's present in his place. Amen. Uh, to our beautiful... Executive Pastor, First Lady Donna Slater, to all the ministers who share this sacred place with me, and to all the deacons, amen, deaconess, to all our leaders, amen, to the partners of New Millennium, to our guests who's here this morning. We just thank God for you. Thank God for our people who are tuning in on Ustream, amen, those who take their time out each Sunday. Amen. You may be somewhere in the world, but we just want you to know that we love you too. Amen. And thank you for coming and sharing in this holy place. Amen. There is a word from the Lord. Amen. We have been dealing with Explore God. Amen. And I have been thoroughly been blessed. Amen. With all the different questions as it relates to God. Amen. Is is there a God? Is God real? You know, why does he allow pain and suffering? All those things. Amen. But today we want to talk about is Jesus really God? Amen. Is Jesus really God? And I don't know if anyone at some point in time asked that question. Amen. But at some point in time I have. Amen. And I've learned a while back that he is God. Amen. I'm answering the question before I even get into it. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. He's not a God. Amen. He is God. And we, those of us who are Trinitarians, believe in the Holy Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. We believe there are three in one. God is our creator. Jesus is our savior. And the Holy Spirit is our sustainer. Are y'all with me? God, God is so holy. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. He's so holy, amen, that he could not die, amen. So he transformed himself into his very own son. Some people can't understand that because he had to be humanity wrapped 
by divinity. I'm, can I get a witness here? In other words, he was wrapped in and he was wrapped out. It was, it, it was all kind. Amen. But he had to be human to die, but he had to be divine to take away our sins. That's the kind of God we serve. Amen. So we just bless God for each and every one of you. We thank God for you. We thank God for what he has done in this place. Amen. I want to thank God for those children. Amen. Give God some praise for our children. Those babies really sung out of there. I was listening to them in my office. I, I couldn't hear them at first, and I had to send a text up here. I said, I can't hear my babies. Amen. And I wanted to hear those children and how God is truly blessing them to grow, not being ashamed, amen, to uh, really go before the people, amen. Don't you know sometimes it can be hard up here looking out there at, at, at people who frown? People who won't smile and encourage them. It can be hard. I remember those days, amen, when I was a child, amen. I wonder why that lady always frowned. And I was up there, and it frightened me, amen. And, and I'm sure our children were frightened. So that's why it's so very uh, important for each and every one of us for as believers to begin to just smile in the presence of God, amen. Just, just, just matter of fact, won't you just go and have a little practice round, two or three people, just turn around and give them the smile. I don't care if you got two or three teeth in your mouth. If you just got two or three teeth in your mouth, just smile at somebody. Give them a good smile, warm smile. Amen. Just, just give them a good little smile. Amen. And, and, and you don't have to be full of anything. Amen. You don't have to be full of alcohol. You don't have to be full of stogies to smile. Amen. You don't have to, you don't have to be given anything to smile. Amen. And somebody had a million, million dollars, I couldn't keep your mouth closed. Amen. Amen. So it's good to smile. Amen. It's good to smile because when you smile, the world smiles back at you. Amen. If they don't smile back at you, you just go it on and know in your heart and your spirit that you're praying for them. Amen. It's all good. Amen. Uh, let's go down to the scripture. Amen. Those of you who have your Bibles and while you're yet standing. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Well, yeah, dead. I don't think that's going to be good sitting right there because my, my hands move too much. <laughs> Amen. I'll just get it from the, uh, from the piano. Amen. In the book of St. John, the gospel according to John. Amen. Thank you. I appreciate that. Amen. In the book of John, the gospel of John. In the 14th chapter, in the 14th chapter, at the ninth verse, I'm reading from the English Standard Version, amen, and then I'm going to read John 10, chapter the 30th verse, amen. I hear pages turn and say amen when you've found it, amen. Thank you, Isaiah, amen, thank you. I think they've gotten it. Amen. Praise God. It's good. Thank you. In John, the 14th chapter, at the ninth verse, it says, Jesus said to him, and then him being Philip, have you been with I have been with you so long, and you still do not know me, Philip. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? In John 10 and 30, the cross-reference scripture to that one, it states that I and the Father are one. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. That doesn't answer the question already. In the course of life, many of us has asked the question, 
is there a God? We found out there is a God. First lady say, it's my testimony. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. And so each and every one of us have a testimony. Amen. Of our relationship with God. Yes. Or should have a testimony right. of our relationship with God. Jesus asked Philip a question. Matter of fact, he said to him, have I been with you so long and you still do not know me? And that is puzzling to me because as we go through the course of life, we're not looking to judge anybody. But certainly we can be fruit inspectors. All right. All right. Amen. Amen. And when you see that there are people who have been with God for so long, you can't help but ask the question, Sister Roland, <laughs> how long have you been with Jesus, God, and you still don't know who he is? It's not asking an intellectual question, meaning that knowing him, knowing all that he has done, but is asking a question based upon action. Because you would think that a person who know God, amen, would not act a certain way according to his word. Can I get a witness? And 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 you so you you begin to think about that and and then you can't help but to think about yourself because remember I said we all are jacked up in some way or another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. We all have problems, we all have issues, amen, of life, amen. And and the thing about it is is the fact that those issues that we have are not transferable. Amen. You can't take the same issues you have and transfer them to heaven. Are oh, y'all with me? In other words, that something has to change. And, and if you know who God is and you know that his son, amen, is the one who came to die for us. And he said, now, look, even when I leave here from the physical body, I would not leave you to be comfortless. But I will send the Holy Ghost who will not only be with you, but he would be in you. So that you can know all things whatsoever I have commanded you. In other words, there should be a transformation of our relationship with him, amen, in this world perspective. Are y'all with me here? In other words, he says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away but behold all things have become new how long have you been with me Philip and you still don't know me how, how, how long you know I, I've seen marriages last for so long amen and then all of a sudden they end up in divorce court and I can't help but to believe, amen, that at some point in time, there was something that changed, amen, that went from fiery to coal, amen. But I need to let somebody know, God says, I'm the same yesterday, today, and for evermore, that, that God don't change like we change. Help me, I wish I had somebody in here. I, I, do I have some help up in here? See, see, I, 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 don't be lukewarm, God said. I, I, I don't want you to be a lukewarm. I, you either hot or you cold. Amen. Don't, don't sit there on straddle on the fence. Amen. Either you know me or you don't know me. Don't try to act like you know me. Oh, I wish I hope I'm helping somebody because because see it's a dangerous thing to act like you know him, but you don't walk like you know him. Am I talking to anybody out here? 
see, the thing is, the thing is, amen, he was talking to Philip, and he said, How? see, they walk with him. This has been a course of three years when Jesus started his public ministry. And he called, amen, certain disciples to come from fishing to be fishermen of men. Can I get a witness here? And, and so my brothers and sisters, I know, I know, I know, I'm not going to get through all this, Pastor Slater, but I'm going to give you what I can. Help, help me, y'all. <laughs> so, so here it is in John records, amen, some of the historicity and, and the good news of Jesus Christ, amen. And he said, I and the Father, according to John 10 and 30, said we are one. So is Jesus really God? For him to say that we are one, see, lets me know that first of all, to be one is unified, and there's nothing on the side. You can't make one, two. You can't make one, three. One is one. Can I get a witness here? And so if he said, I and the Father are one, that lets me know unified, they're one in body. Hello, somebody. But when you look at God, he's one in spirit. Uh, are y'all welcome with me here? I, I, I know I gave you something else, Brother Ernest, but you know the Holy Spirit leading me here. Amen. They've both been putting certain things up on the screen. Y'all just flow with me. Amen. Because I'm flowing with the Holy Ghost. Help me. <laughs> you know, see, so, we, so the thing is, the question is, is Jesus really God? And to substantiate that Jesus is really God, according to the word, some skeptics would say, how can you say that Jesus is God, according to the word? But you first have to prove that the word that you're reading is substantiated in truth. Isn't that good argument right there? Because we have to understand, my brothers and sisters, that that the, the, everything that that we believe is bleed upon the sole rule and authority of the word of God. In other words, if we can't believe what the word of God says, amen, how can we believe that Jesus is God? Hello, somebody. And so therefore, everything that we claim and believe is on fallow ground. Are y'all with me here? And, and so therefore to believe and to substantiate that this word is the word of God, there is textual consistency and uniqueness about the word of God. Anything that has to prove something that is real, especially a book, has to have textual consistency and uniqueness about it. Amen. The Bible is remarkably self-existent. Despite having been written more than four by 40 different authors, amen, over a period and time or a time span of 2,000 years, God's moral law, man's rebellion against God's law, and God's plan of salvation are the continuing theme throughout the pages of Scripture. You can't help but to see that God, every time man sin, God always have a way out for him. Can I get a witness here? You can go all the way back to Genesis, even when Adam and Eve, amen, disobeyed the will of God. God had a way out for Adam and Eve, and he said, except you put forth your hand to the tree of life, you won't live. You see it, it's all through the word. Hello, somebody. So there is a contextual consistency, a uniqueness of God's word. It's consistent all through the Bible, amen, even though skeptics try to prove that it's inconsistent. But I like to say, my brothers and sisters, I believe it because I have the Holy Ghost living on the inside of me, and he's able to help me to prove that which is true and that which is false, amen? So if you want to understand the word of God help me somebody you got to live by the word of God you got to accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior Lord and then the Holy Ghost 
he'll come in and he'll help you understand everything that you need to understand. He'll help you to be able to mount up the truth. He said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Baby, if you got the mind of Christ, you can ask the question to somebody, how long? Will you be with me? And you still don't even know me. Uh, so te textual consistency and uniqueness help us to understand that the word is true. External evidences also help us to understand that the word of God is true. So Christians have argued for the truth of scripture on the basis of various lines of external evidences. For example, archaeological discoveries have affirmed and confirmed many evidences of the Bible. The excavation of Jericho walls reveal that the walls of the city did indeed fall. Can I get a witness? In other words, excavation is people who dig under rocks and sometimes they got to dig down so deep in order to find evidence that whatever the Bible substantiated as a truth, they find it through excavation and they found that Jericho's walls did in fact fall. God's word is the only word, amen, that can, can predict what's going to happen. And it, it, can I use another word instead of predict? Uh, prophesy what's getting ready to happen before it happened and it would have a consistency all through time and eternity. Can I get a witness here? That's the kind of God we serve. He won't leave you hanging, my brothers and sisters. If you just hold on just a little while longer and see what the end gonna be, I promise you he'll reveal himself. Can I get a witness this? The external evidence is Jericho's walls did in fa indeed fall. Confirm archaeologic archaeologically uh, through, amen, external evidences. For example, amen, the five cities of the plain scribe found in Genesis 14 and 2. Amen. But not only uh, to prove that the word, the Bible, is the written word of God, which is the Logos, through the external or the textual consistency and uniqueness and the external evidences, but also predictive prophecy and divine insight. Amen. Prove that this Bible is the word of God. A number of pages in the Bible predict future events in great detail, events that were future to the writers, but are now in our past. Can I get a witness? That's all you see is God bringing forth his word to us. If, if God said it, that settles it. Hello, somebody. If God revealed it to us, that's why he used prophets. And, and, and the prophets prophesied about the revelation of God to the revealing of God, what he has for his people. Don't you tell me that God won't let you know something that is getting ready to happen. That's preparation. Hello, somebody. And God will prepare you for things that are getting ready to come and what you have to do is get yourself ready for them. Are y'all with me here? You, you, yeah, a lot of people say, well, God ain't letting me know nothing. Well, the reason why he ain't letting you know nothing is because your ears are closed. You don't want to hear him. Can I get a witness here? He'll let you know about things getting ready to come. But in order to know about the things getting ready to come, you got to have a relationship with him. Are y'all with me here? If you don't have a relationship with him, you can expect amen to know anything that he has to reveal to you and how he reveals it to you is through the power of the Holy Ghost who indwells the believer and when he indwells you he will lead you to all knowledge and victory can I get a witness I'm here I'm talking about the word of God I'm talking about the authentic the authoritative the anointing word of God amen well, let me see if I can go it on, amen, and cut across the country, amen. 
Uh, so, so therefore, the standards of standards, the standard of standards, I began to look at to it. So therefore, in order to authenticate contextual consistency and uniqueness and external evidences and predictive prophecy and divine insight, there are standard, there's a standard of standards. The above line of evidences are certainly consistent with the premise that the Bible is true. Many people have no doubt found such evidences quite convincing, yet we must admit that none of the above lines of evidence quite prove that the Bible must be the inerrant word of God. Are y'all with me? Even though I pointed out the external consistency and uniqueness, the external evidences, amen, none of them really can point out to some because there are the skeptics who are always denying the fact of the authenticity of the word of God. Critics have their counter arguments to all of the above that I've stated. If we are to know for certain that the Bible is true, we will need to defend, uh, need a different kind of argument, one that is absolutely conclusive and irrefutable. Are y'all with me? In all the above cases, we took, uh, we took as an unstated premise, hallelujah somebody, that there are certain standards by which we judge how likely some things is true. When we stop to consider what these standards are, we will see that the standards themselves are proof that the Bible is true. Are y'all with me? Are y'all rolling with me? Putting it together this way. Only the Bible can make sense of the standards by which we evaluate whether or not something is true. One such set of standard is the law of logic. Are y'all with me? There's laws of logic. The laws of logic. We all know that a true claim cannot contradict another truth. Can I get a witness? In other words, that would violate the law of logic if a true claim goes against a true claim. Are y'all with me here? In other words, the light is red. And the lights can't be not red if it's red. Are, are y'all with me here? It cannot both be true at the same time and in the same sense. So therefore, the laws of logic thus represent a standard by which we can judge certain truth claims. Are y'all with me? Moreover, all people seem to know laws like the law of non-contradiction. We all assume that certain laws are the same everywhere and apply at all times without exception. Are y'all with me here? So if this light is on, the light can't be off at the same time. Can I get a witness here? In other words, either it's on. Yeah, I think y'all getting it, amen. So the laws of logic said, if I look at the light and the light is on, the light is on, amen. Now only a fool would say he's looking at a light that's on and say it off. <laughs> Hello, somebody. But they say a fool or a liar. So therefore, so based upon the previous assertions, pro proving that the Bible to be considered true, and it is, now we can move to ask the question, is Jesus really God? Can I get a witness here? Because to ask the question, there must be recorders of recorded truths and the Bible being the recorded true record of God. Are y'all with me? So when we go to 2 Timothy 3 and 16 and 17, the Bible merely, merely states that all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, 
for correction, for training in righteousness. Verse 17 says that the man of God or Nudigen, the woman of God, may be completely equipped for every work that God has in store. Are y'all with me? Are you going to keep on praying for me? Yeah, that, that, that is the word. And when you go to Matthew the fourth chapter, y'all better write these down because I'm, I'm, I'm moving right about now. Matthew the fourth chapter, uh, the fourth verse, it says, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And when we look at the mouth of God, we're looking at his holy word. Are y'all with me? Therefore, according to Paul's assertion in the epistle to Timothy, the Bible claiming its words written, there is God's word. Amen. The written word, the logos, which is the written word, and to be used for teaching, for reproof, correction, training, and righteousness. Are y'all with me here? So therefore, in the scripture, God states that Jesus is his son. Can I get a witness? When you go to Matthew, the third, the third chapter, verse 17, it says, And behold, the voice from heaven, who is God, he said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. In other words, the Bible is stating that Jesus, hallelujah, is the Son of God, but guess what? He is God. Are y'all with me here? According to Mark 11, also, which is a gospel, and the voice says, from heaven you are my beloved son with whom I am well pleased Jesus said in the scripture himself according to John 14 and 9 Jesus said to him have I been with you so long and you still don't know me Philip look at your neighbor and say how long you've been walking with Jesus how long have you been walking with God According to John 30, uh, 10 and 30, he said, I am, uh, I and the Father are one. God's creative power is found over in Genesis 1 and 1 and verse 26. You see the creative power of God. It says, in the beginning, God created. Are y'all with me here? The heavens and the earth. He, he has creative power. He says, in the beginning, God. In other words, that's one. Are y'all with me? And when you go to verse 26 in the same chapter, he said, then God said, let us make man in our image and our likeness. So it went from one unified God to God setting up for future event because the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost got to come on the scene. Y'all not hearing me here. Are y'all praying for me? So we see God's creative power. All things, are, are, according to John 1 and 3, it says all things was made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. That's creative power, B. Can I get up in the, that organ that you're sitting on? God created it. Hello, somebody. He just put it in the mind of man, and man found out about it later on. Oh, help me, Lord. Help me. I, I'm, I'm trying to get through with this. Amen. But sometimes things get, just get so good to you. Amen. So how are they one? According to John 1 and 1, the question is, how are they one? How is Jesus and God one? And we see over in Genesis 1, he said, in the beginning, God. And we see God brought in the unified trinity in verse 26. He said, let us. So the question is, how are they one according to John 1 uh, and verse 14? The Bible says, in the beginning was the word. Can I get a witness? That's what happened over in Genesis 1. There was God who was the word. And the Bible says, and the word was with God. That's verse 26 in Genesis 1. Are y'all with me here? And the word was Y'all better get on up out of here. Don't, don't you tell me about God's word that it won't prove itself. Oh, y'all with me, test Go on home, D. Amen. And then all of a sudden, God said, I can't die because I'm spiritually. So let me go to verse 14 in John 1. And the Bible said, and the word became. 
and it dwelt among us and we beheld his glory as the only begotten son of God full of grace and truth can I get a witness here? If somebody asks you, is Jesus really God? Oh, the only thing you can say, yes, he is. He's God because he walks with me. He's God because he talks with me. He's God because he blesses me. And he's blessing you right now. Maybe every time he breathed, God, the Bible said, God breathes, amen. He breathed into man the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Touch your name and say, God is breathing in me. He's breathing in me. How many know he's breathing in you? He's breathing in you. He's breathing in you right now. Can I get a witness? You won't be walking if it wasn't God breathing in you. You wouldn't be talking if you wasn't God breathing in you. You wouldn't be living right now. You won't have salvation if Jesus didn't die. Somebody know he died. Didn't he die? He died. He died because there had to be a blood atonement to bring an unholy man back to a holy God. He died. Can I get a witness here? You know I know he died because the Bible say on the three eyes, on the first day, they killed him and they hung him on a rugged cross, put nails in his hand, put nails in his feet, pierced him in his side, and he died. He was in there all day Friday, all day Saturday, all day Saturday night. Can I get a witness here? But somebody say, oh, yeah. Somebody got to say early. Because early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. So if God chooses to spread himself in three directions, I am creator, I am savior, I am your sustainer, he got the power. Touch your neighbor and say he has the power. He has the creative power. He has the authoritative power. He can do what he wanna do. He's sovereign. He's a sovereign God. He has that power. I can go home with you and I can stay right here. I got that power. I'm omnipresent. But if you know how I know your thoughts, he said, I'm omniscient. I have all knowledge. You better touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, Jesus is God. He's the second person of the Godhead. He's God the Father. He's God the Son. And he's God the Holy Ghost. And I need to let somebody know that Jesus ain't here in the physical body, but he's here in the physical body. He's here in that spirit of the Holy Ghost, and he'll go home with you and me at the same time. Who wouldn't serve a God like this? Who wouldn't serve a God who created, put the red in the rose? Put the God green in the grass. Who wouldn't serve a God that took a little bit of eternity and he flung it out in the space and he called it time? That's the kind of God we serve. He's all powerful. He's all mighty. Many people have tried to denounce him, but he keep on proving himself over and over again. Can I get a witness here? Has he proved himself to you? Jesus asked Philip, he, he said, how long have you been with me and you still don't know me? How long have you been with Jesus? You seen Jesus in your grandmother. You seen Jesus in your grandfather. Can I get a witness here? A lot of people have to see things in order to believe things. But Jesus said in his word, blessed are those who believe and have not seen. I wish I had two or three witnesses up in here who know about the power of Jesus. 
Can I get a witness? He gave power to this blind. Can I get a witness? Now they can see. The man at the pool of Bethesda, he told him to take up your bed and walk. Can I get a witness here? The same Jesus that was in the Old Testament is the revealed Jesus in the New Testament. He's that kind of God, I tell you. And if you're serving that kind of God, you need to get up off your... And you need to let the world know, I got a God who's able. He can turn me around when I'm walking in the wrong direction. He'll go before me and behind me and above me and beneath me at the same time. But the powerful thing I like, not only is he above me, and not only is he beneath me, and not only is he all around me, but guess what? He's in me. Anybody, is he in you? If God is in you, you will be able to deal with the devil. The Bible says resist the devil and he'll flee from you. You got to know that Jesus is God and he has all power. I said he's got all power. All power. He got so much power. Hezekiah was so sick on his bed of affliction and he looked and turned his face to the wall and he called upon the Lord and God took the sun and he moved it from the east that was going down and he backed it up to the west. Somebody say that's power. That's power. There was a man that was paralytic and Jesus touched him and his arms began to receive that strength. That's power. Can I get a witness here? Because he's God. In that power? Don't you know you're walking with power? Don't you know you're walking in power? Don't you know the power is in you? And the only thing you have to do is access the power. Tell your neighbor, stop belly aching. When the devil start coming up against you, stop gripping and crying. Because if you have the Holy Ghost living in you, the Bible says he will give you power. The church receive power after the Holy Ghost. After the Holy Ghost came upon them, they were able to speak in other tongues and people still understood them because they was all connected by the power. What, kind, what matter of man is this? Even the winds and the wave obey. What manner of man is this? Can I get a witness here? Baby, you got to ask yourself when you was in some bad situation and there was nobody else but God brought you out, what manner of man is this? When you saw the hell hounds on your trail and then all of a sudden God made them lay down and act like lambs, what matter? What manner of man is this? Can I get a witness here? Go on and touch your neighbor. His name is Jesus, and he's giving sight to the blind. He's making the lame to walk. He's making the dumb to talk. Death, you got to get your skirt and get out of here. Blind Bartimaeus didn't have no sight. But he heard Jesus was coming into town. And then all of a sudden, when he heard Jesus was coming in town, he said, Thou son of David, have mercy upon me. And then you got the haters around you. Shut up. He don't hear you. And then Jesus said, Come here, blind Bartimaeus. Do we have any blind Bartimaeus is in the house who don't believe and you know you've been crying out for Jesus and everybody been trying to push you away from him. Everybody been trying to tell you to shut up. You've been going through some things. Your finances is all jacked up. Your spirit is all jacked up. And they say you're still praying for a God who don't even hear you. I'm here to tell you his name is Jesus and he hears you. 
at your neighbor and say, he hear my prayer. And he would answer by and by. Hear a little prayer we're turning. Know that the fire is burning. Just a little talk with Jesus. He'll make it all right. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Say, yeah! Yeah! He'll do it! Yeah! I tell you, he'll do it, he'll do it, he'll do it, he'll do it! I wanted to throw a little hoop in there, but that's all right. My old pastor, you say the right cut of me to make his, make his own gravy. <laughs> Hello, somebody. <laughs> it's the word. It's the word. It's the word. Jesus is the word. Because it says in the beginning was the word. And the word was in God. Hello, that's inclusive. And the word was God. That's unification. Can I get a witness here? Don't let nobody tell you Jesus ain't God and make him another God. And Jesus said, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? And you got different opinions. Some say you're the prophet. Some say you're Elijah. But Peter said, God, I'm the... Jesus said, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. Can I get a witness? It was the Holy Ghost. Some things you, you know you can't do it by your own mind. You can't do it by external evidences. It has to be the Holy Ghost who reveals things to you. Why? Because you have a relationship with him. When you have a relationship with him, he will lead you to all victory. He will reveal things to you that you couldn't even reveal to yourself. You couldn't even find it in a textbook. You couldn't Google it. I might preach about Google the Holy Ghost. Yeah, he got the answer for everything. Are y'all with me? There may be someone here today who don't know Jesus, period. But this is your moment. This is your time, my brother, my sister, whoever you are. It's your time to get to know him. The Bible records him as a lamb of God that take away the sins of the world. Can I get a witness? It also records him as hair is like lamb's wool, his eyes like great balls of fire, and out of his mouth come a two-edged sword, feet like polished brass. But I'll say he comes at the, as the king of kings and he's the lord of lords oh my god the children of israel were looking for their king oh my lord they tried to look at external evidences as kings but god had to bring the king of kings he had to bring the lord of lords he is lord god is lord He's Lord of the living and the dead. And if you don't know him today, this is your time to get to know him. If you do know him and you're looking for a church home, amen, somebody. And I encourage every believer that if you know him and your mother knew him and your daddy knew him and they say, baby, you make sure you get yourself in church that teaches the word of God. Don't delay, don't wait, amen. The day that you hear my voice, harden out your heart, get down there, amen, and make a relationship. See, because everything is about relationship. So the question is, when Jesus asked Philip, he said, how long have you been with me and you don't know me? He's talking about relationship. Don't say you have a relationship with him and you don't know him. It's possible to have a relationship with somebody and don't even know them. If you're here today, my brother, my sister, I extend the invitation to Christian discipleship. 
symbolizing that you're taking a bold commitment to get to know who Jesus is or to form a relationship with a local church where you can work out your soul salvation with fear and trembling. This is your moment. This is your time. He said, the day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart. In other words, don't let the devil tell you next week, tomorrow. Uh-uh, today is not promised. Next to next minute is not promised to us. He said, the day that you hear my voice. In other words, begin to act upon that which you hear. You're not here by accident. You're here because the Holy Spirit has guided and directed you in this direction. Don't be afraid. Don't watch nobody. Let me pray for you right now. Father God. I pray for every believer, bow your heads, bow your head, close your eyes. I pray for every believer, oh Heavenly Father. And God, at the conclusion of this prayer, or even during the prayer, the saints begin to move toward the throne of grace. They begin to move toward this anointed altar, oh Heavenly Father. And they want to bring their family and they want to get their life together. They want to know that they're worshiping a true and living God and they're doing it together. The Bible says, forsake not the assembly of ourselves together as some have. In other words, this is about a fellowship with those who have a relationship with the true and living God. So God, I pray that they move obediently in Jesus' name. Amen. Come, my brother. Come, my sister, whoever you are. Don't you, don't you delay the moment. Don't you delay the hour. You just come as the Holy Spirit is moving you. Don't you let nothing hold you back. Don't you let nothing distract you. Don't you even worry about people who are looking at you. Say, I got to go down and get this thing right. It's time to get my life right. It's time to hook up with a local assembly so I can work out my soul salvation with fear and trembling. It's time to do it God's way. I want my life to be pleasing unto God. I want my life to be pleasing unto him. I want everything that God has in store for me. If you're here today, don't you delay. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, oh, oh. oh Jesus. Sometimes I call him late at night because I know he'll come when I call him. He'll make everything all right. I call his name Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my heavenly father. My savior. I tell you, I love him. I love him. I love him. I love him. Oh, Jesus. I said I love him. I love him. Just look up unto heaven and just lift your hands up and, and just call his name. It's something about just saying Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Just the way it just rolls off your tongue. Just Jesus, Jesus. You don't even have to say anything else but just his name, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. The lily of the valley, Jesus. Jesus. Your bright and morning star, my bright and morning star, Jesus. My healer, Jesus. Jesus. My peace in the midnight hour, Jesus. My friend, when my friends have turned their back on me. He 
said, I'll stick closer than a brother. Who else can love you? Mm, nobody but. He's the only one who can really love you. He teaches us what love is. Because he laid down his own life. That's love. Jesus, Jesus. When you were just about to give up. He said, Lord, I just don't even know what I can do right now. He said, if you just call on me. He said, I'll be quicker than right now, sooner than at once. Jesus. Jesus, 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 something about the name Jesus, something about the name Jesus, demons tremble by the name of Jesus, Jesus, sometimes you just have to walk through your house, walk through your job and up and down the street and at the stores and just say Jesus, And you'll see some things breaking up and start falling apart because of the name Jesus. It's power in the name Jesus. There's power in the name Jesus. There's healing in the name Jesus. There's peace in the name Jesus. There's joy in the name Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Even when you don't have a peace about you, just say Jesus. And he'll bring that peace. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Just say Jesus, 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 Jesus. One more time, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Is Jesus God? <laughs> Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, glory to his name. Mighty word. Give the Lord a praise offering for his word today. What a mighty word. Just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, what a mighty word. That was a mighty word. How I many could pet your spiritual belly and say, I'm good and full? <laughs> that was a mighty word. I can take that somewhere. I can go and feed some folks with that. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God. Oh, and then it said later on, and the word became flesh. Oh, yeah, I can feed some folks with that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I remember when I was younger, and we were always cooking when the kids were younger, and we always had food at the house, so people would always come by our house. And I would always think, oh, my Lord, do we have enough food? Because people would just drop by because they knew we had all them boys, so we had to feed them. And it always was enough food. Look at your neighbor and say, I got enough to share today. Or I can pass something to somebody. It's on. I, I, can, I can share this. Mm. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all stay resting upon your feet. We got a praise testimony, and you get ready to break out in that in a minute. And, and um, so many times, saints of God, you don't know what's going on here in the house and how your bishop and your leaders here in the house are warring against the enemy. You know, and I thank God for all of you who are standing against the enemy no matter what he try to throw at you, and no matter how he try to hit you, and no matter how he try to sucker punch you. But you know, we had a Bible study on Wednesday night, and those that were here that were still hanging around, because you know y'all the parking lot ministry and everything, all of a sudden the lights went out. Yeah. And Bishop and the men, they ran out to the box out there, and the wires in the box were sizzling, melting. Somebody say melting. Yeah. Melting the casing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it was sizzling, and it was melting, and, 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 and they didn't know what was going on. And so uh, Deacon Ernest was trying to call TXU. I said, no, we got Reliant. So we were trying to call her in line, and you know, they talking about, if you would like to pay your bill, which we already had, I did double check. 
then press one. We ain't trying to, we didn't pay our bill. We trying to get in touch with somebody. And, and then the Holy Spirit dropped in Encore. So we found the number to Encore and, and Deacon Powell called Encore. And the men were out there trying to make sure the building don't catch on fire. Now, meanwhile, the lights are still on back there in the fellowship hall. And folks are still going on about their business. Don't even know what's happening up here at the front. Somebody just say, but Jesus, but Jesus, I'm telling you, God will keep you covered. All you got to do is keep trusting in him and he will keep you covered. Keep living your life for him and he will keep you covered. So as we're working all of this out and everything and Deacon Powell, I was sitting in there and he told Encore and he put in a service called the lady. And he was like, well, when will they be out here? Because the box is melting and the wire is melting. And, and she was like, well, we don't know. It could be an hour or two. But we'll come and we'll let you know. Uh, we need to know something. We need to know something. So by that time, we're coming out and everybody's pretty much leaving. And Sister Angie was driving off and we were standing out in the parking lot back here. And she drove right up here to the mailbox and she said, Encore is here. So, so Bishop and the men and myself, we all came around here to meet the guy at the box and everything. And he drives up in the big truck with the emergency thing on it and, and everything. And we were like, wow, they sure did dispatch you fast. And he said, I haven't heard from dispatch. Come on now. <laughs> oh, my God. He said, I haven't heard from dispatch. He said, I had a little sensor. I was down the street. <laughs> just waiting to get off from work. He said, and I had a little sensor go off and said the electricity is off in this grid. He said, so I came to see about it. God will send somebody to come and see about you. Hey, before you can even get on your knees and pray. Hey. So he said, his name was Chris, wasn't it? It was Chris, and he came, and he, he came, and he was checking out the box, and he opened it up. He said, oh, yeah, oh. And Bishop, you know, Bishop, bless my darling husband, y'all's Bishop, my Bishop. You know, he started reaching for the box. The man said, no, don't touch that. It's still hot. You know, God put people around you and said, don't do that. Don't touch that. It's hot. And, and so Bishop was like, I'm just showing you, you know, but I'm looking at my husband. He looked, turned around looking at us, talking, but I'm just showing you this. And he and just waved. And I said, Lord, protect this man of God. Protect him, Lord. So the man, Chris, he proceeded on. He said, he said, well, I have to cut the electricity off. And, you know, sometimes you think it's just a switch thing. But, no, he got in his truck, turned it around, backed it up. And then he got in the little elevator thing. And he went all the way up to the top of the building there. And as he went to the building, I'm thinking, well, what is he about to do? And then he pulled out these big old shears. And he cuts the one from the pole. Why? Wow, that's about this big. He cuts it. I was like, oh, Lord. Can't bootleg it. We ain't going to be able to put this back together. And then he proceeds to cut off the next one. There's two of them. And I was like, and by that time, Deacon Powell said, well, there go the lights in the back. Uh, sir, did you have to turn the lights off in the back? He said, well, you know, it doesn't run through your meter, so we won't you have free electricity. Oh, no, we don't want that. <laughs> Bless the Lord. Okay. So now the whole building, outside everything, is completely dark. We said, my Jesus. He says, so he's taping up the ends, and he says, he says, he says, you have to get a master electrician out here. Master electrician. We got some folks that know how to put some lights and wires together. Master electrician, that means you got to pay them by the hour. That's what that means for those who don't know. And master electrician, yes. Oh, and then after the master electrician comes, then you have to call the city or they'll call the city. And then you have to get a, a, a green, green tag from the city. I got to involve the city of Dallas. I done worked with some of them folks and I know how they can be. Oh, my Lord, I just know the kind of charges they have. Huh? Then they got to call Encore. And then they got to call Encore and then Encore. Lord. Okay, well, some of y'all might say, well, that's fine, because church is not till Sunday. For those who didn't know, we had prayer visual on Thursday nights. <laughs> this was Wednesday night. Prayer visual was starting at 8 o'clock p.m. Thursday night. 
Bishop had told me he wanted to get some candles, and I said, Bishop, we don't need that many candles, and let's get the battery-operated ones, you know, not where we won't have so much fire around here and, and everything. And he got the battery-operated ones, and he said, oh, yeah, that'd be nice, that'd be nice. Bishop looked like we're going to have to use candles tomorrow night. Do we need to go get some more battery-operated candles? Well, the Lord bless. We started getting phone calls. We started making phone calls that Wednesday night, all the way even up till midnight. Thursday morning, the Lord blessed me, called the electric company, and he called several of them, but he took this one, and, and, and they came on, and they fixed it. Amen. The master electrician had to come and fix. And he wasn't cheap. He was not cheap. Y'all say, where's she going? I'm going where Deacon Powell, Deacon Powell, where are you? Where are he supposed to be up here? Oh, he's in the back. Okay. Last week we were talking about, or last this even this past Wednesday, we were talking about how God will provide. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. How he is a provider. Right here. Where are you going? <laughs> right here, Deacon. Right here. Right here, Deacon. <laughs> But God provided, so the electrician, they came out and they fixed the electricity. Well, it wasn't cheap. And then they said, well, we can, you know, mind you, it's Thursday morning, Thursday afternoon. We can get the city of Dallas out here, but, you know, it's a big old charge for a one-day service. So they added that on in there. Then Deacon Powell spoke with Encore, and they said, well, we got to charge you because we got to come back out there. And they added that on in there. They're adding that. We ain't even got that bill yet, but we trust in God. But God, somebody say, but God. but God. See, saints, when you're doing what you're supposed to do, and I mean as a body of Christ, we didn't have to make zillions of phone calls to ask folks, because see, we're talking about a bill, $5,000 almost, just out of the drop of a hat. And you know churches, y'all know, just look at your neighbor and say, you know folks at church be finicky with their money. You don't tell folks you're talking about them or they talking about you. Just say, folks be finicky with their money. They don't, always stay, they don't always stay consistent with their tithes. I'm just telling the truth. God loves the truth. Amen. They don't stay consistent with their tithes. They don't stay consistent. We got church anniversary coming up. We ask everyone in here. We ask everyone that's on the roll. We have over 200 and some people on the roll. We have an average of 185 that show up every Sunday. We ask you to give $75 on next Sunday. Amen. 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 But see, when we do what we're supposed to do, God said, bring the tithes into my storehouse so there may be what? Because he looked good now. Now, Bishop said, why I got Ernest up here? Because Sister Daphne said he looked good. So, I'm, <laughs> so I missed the first part of what she said, but I kind of caught up a little bit. And so uh, I think she was referring to it. We had our leadership meeting last week, and this is one of the things we spoke about, how we, um, about the, we, so we're doing really good as far as people being in the house. We're doing like 180 people a week. That's, that's really, really good. And so the math was off, though, for us to have that average of people in the house each week. And I think, and I'm kind of using my memory, but we only had like 29 people who actually did Nehemiah. Nehemiah, we're doing $50. Nehemiah is our building fund. We have a building fund, so when stuff like the electricity goes out, instead of having to get on the phone and call friends and family or to come up here and do a second offering, we can go to our account, pull it out, pay it, and keep moving. That's the whole purpose of that. So thank God that we had that, but what we were pointing out was that for us to have 180 members on average a week and only have 29 people to actually partake in the Nehemiah, it was offset. So we were telling the leaders that so they can come back and share with the rest of the congregation, like, hey, guys, Here's the reason we're doing We're not taking the money and just spending it. I promise you that. <laughs> we're trying to build our account up so we can be ready for rainy days. And so thankfully, this time around, the money was there for us to repair and do whatever we need to do. But we don't want to have, we're praying that they don't have back-to-back -back things where that account's not there no more. So we, we ask for stuff, there's a meaning behind it. Our goal is to eventually take that and we're trying to knock the walls out. We're trying to make more space for you guys. We're trying to have the kids have a little section over here. So we got plans for it. But we just need everybody to be obedient. We talked about having that 20-80, so 20% of the people caring, 80% of the church. 
And so, yeah, we're thankful that we have those faithful 20%, but we want to increase that to where it's 30, 40, kind of balance it out now. So that's pretty much the gist of what we were talking about last week. And this, I mean, if you believe you're supposed to be in this house and you believe the vision that the Bishop First Lady set for us, whenever we do stuff like this, this is part of that vision. We're trying to expand out and do, do more things in the community. So, amen. Amen. He do look a little sharp, don't he? Amen. That's one of uh, Deacon Mentor's leaders on the finance ministry. Deacon Mentor is doing a great job, all the finance staff. Amen. Let's give God some praise for them. We try to make it comfortable in here with the air. Amen. They got all these beautiful lights. Amen. The light up. And they got some other things they're going to surprise you with, you know, that they're doing to enhance the kingdom of God. Amen. And so we're thankful for the work that they're doing. We're thankful for the work everyone who's intentionally doing in the house. Amen. Amen. To, to make our place of worship a better place so that people in the community, whoever comes, can come and, and most importantly, make ourselves better. That's what we had to pray for. Amen. Because it's, it's one thing to have the building looking good and not have our spirit looking good. And I'd rather have our spirit looking good than the building. But if your spirit is right, guess what? The house is going to be right. Come on, give God some praise. Amen. So, so, uh, past Slater, she has a vision to have a back room back there for uh, for your bishop, and that's going to be a, a conference room and different things like that. And it's going to be a classroom too, because they use my office as a classroom also. Amen. But it averaged two classrooms. Amen. So there's a lot of things we want to do, but that's the Bible says people without a vision perish. Amen. And we don't want to perish, saying that we're God's children. That's not doesn't coincide it don't work amen to say we love God and yet and still we're not blessed amen but I would like to be a blessing to other churches that's your vision for your bishop amen we want to be able to go and sow into other churches you know and help them as we have been helped amen we have been blessed by other churches because God saw favor in us and he put that in the pastor. Amen. Hello, somebody. And so we want to do the same thing. We have pastoring sons uh, that are part of this ministry. We want to be able to go and help them. Amen. In any way with that, we can continue to help them because we're helping them. Amen. Praise God. So I thank God for each and every one of you. Stand. Amen. If you are a first time guest. Amen. Meet right over here, this young lady right here, Sister Blackshire. <laughs> Blackshire, Sheer, Shanice. Amen. We want to. Amen. Praise God. I would like to thank God for the 45 people who showed up during the prayer visual. Amen. We took pictures. We're going to get ready to take pictures. Those 45, let me tell you, we had people showing up as, as late as 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning. Early. early. That's the earliest. Thank you. Early. And and then the last one showed up about 745, and we all concluded here in prayer. And so the Holy Spirit has put it on my heart to do it quarterly. Amen. To do it quarterly. Because we need, it, whenever, if we ever needed prayer, we need it now. Because the higher God takes you, you're going to have challenges that come up against you. Go ahead on and rejoice in those challenges because you know it's nobody else but God who got your back. Amen. So I want to thank God for each and every one of you. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church Let the church say 
Father God, we thank you for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard, and what our hearts have felt. We thank you, Lord, for your word, O oh, Heavenly Father. Is Jesus really God? And yes, he is God. He's God manifested in the flesh. And so, God, we thank you for those who are here this morning. We pray, God, that you bring us back to this place, O oh, Heavenly Father, on Wednesday as we study more of your word. God, I want to thank you, Lord, for those who are coming on Fridays and, and leading and explore God and continuing that on to the 24th. 